Welcome back to Rising to the Challenge of te Teaching Remotely. In our last episode, we talked about the pillars that you want to base your class on, deciding what those pillars are. And today we're going to talk about the basic philosophy on brain science. What's going on in your brain and why what pillars you choose are important and how you should make that choice. So first thing, I think we all know that uh, anyone who sits in front of a screen, especially teenagers and kids in front of a screen, they're going to turn into zombies. We want to limit their screen time as much as possible which is hard because we've got these online classes, right? So think very hard about every minute you're having them sit in front of the screen and think about if there's a way you can get them out of the screen or build in some kind of stretching breaks or something into all the activities that they have to do to show mastery for your class. So first of all, we need to talk about synchronous versus asynchronous learning. Hopefully you've already heard these terms. Synchronous is your online class. Oops, that's good. I'm using a touchpad mouse and it's not responding well. Your synchronous online class, that's you sitting in front of the camera talking to them in real time, okay? Asynchronous is all the stuff you give them to do on their own. Um, and it's really important especially for the asynchronous class that you keep all your videos and activities under 10 minutes a piece so that your kids know to get up and stretch in between activities. They just can't concentrate in front of the computer for long periods of time. I know you think they can because they sit and they watch TV and they watch their funny cat videos and everything, but are they really concentrating or are they just kind of zoning out, right? So keep everything bite-sized for them just like you would in the classroom you would never have an activity that lasts more than 10 minutes you'd have them get up and stretch and do something else hopefully okay so one problem that i struggled with when we went remote is i was only given two synchronous classes a week and really to learn a language you got to be hitting the books every single day. You need to have some contact with the language every single day. If you're waiting, if you're doing it like once a week or twice a week, everything's falling out of your head. We know Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve. Um, you can't retain any information. So um, my school was using an absolute horrible learning management system. But we did have Microsoft Teams. We are a Microsoft school because I'm in the Pacific Northwest. And I was told that parents would revolt if we tried to use anything other than Microsoft. So the first thing I did was I went to my Microsoft Teams and I set it up by days of the week because I wanted to remind the students, hey, you might not have me Monday, but you better be doing something Monday. And here's what you should be doing on Tuesday. And here's our class on Wednesday. And this is what you should be doing on Wednesday. Set it up. But I really like my students to be very visual. I like them to, um, you know, I mean, I think memory is visual and language learning is all about memory tricks, right? So I also use this program called Loops and I'm not a huge fan of Loops. So I'm not, I'm not saying rush out in a buying frenzy, but I will show it to you so you can think about how to make your lessons visual if you agree with me. So this is Loops, and hopefully if you've got Canvas or Google Classrooms, you can find some way to make things really visually appealing. I don't know because I haven't worked with those, but um, I did like how I could lay things out for my students. Hey, here's the week. Each one of these is a day, and um, they click on it, they zoom in. Oh, here, tells them to do their Duolingo today, okay? Um, here's your Quizlet for today, work on this takes you right to it, that link. Here's your peak save for today, takes you right to it. And then your song, remember I talked about my pillars that I had decided on, um, all right there. And then any notes I had to give to the kids. And then the next day they'd go to the next day and they'd say, oh, here's how you log into our class. Um, here's a short little video that I want you to watch asynchronously. And since this was like a review week, I said you could watch this if you wanted. I'm very big into the Zips mystery um, so that students uh, know why it's important to memorize high frequency words. 
Um, and again, Duolingo, the same Duolingo, the same Quizlet, because I needed that repetition. The same peak say all week long, because I needed that repetition. And then I would read them a little story. And this class was working on um, Tauntaun. And then I'd give them a project that they'd work on for the week. And in this, this case, it was Pixton, and I'll talk about Pixton a little bit later in this video. But um, I kept every activity very short. And I also told the students how long they should be spending on each activity so they could plan accordingly. But I definitely encourage them to get up and stretch in between each thing. Now, loops is a bit clunky. So, you know, when our school moves to a better learning management system, I will happily move on for it. But I do like how visual things were. Testing, you're going to find, is pretty much out the window. There's really no way you can give a standardized test the way that you're normal, normally used to giving summative assessments. You're going to have to really th start thinking outside the box because we don't want our students going to Google Translate. My very favorite test to give was what I would do for roll call. And just after a while, I would say, you guys did great. I'm putting that in as a test. I will talk about that more in video number three because I'm struggling to make my videos 10 minutes long or less so that I can show to you how much nicer it is to have short videos. I don't know, I'm struggling, but. Um, so I said, um, I, I showed you that I had a project for the week and that project for the week was my test for the week, okay? Um, one of the things I did, I used Pixton, which is a storyboard program. Hey, I just gave a webinar for Pixton, so I have an entire video. Um, check that out, and you can see how Pixton is used. Um, and then some the, some project during the week, it could have been Pixton. Sometimes it was a recipe. My colleague and I both showed our students how to make tortillas, or I showed my French students how to make crepes, or I showed my Japanese students um, how to make um, omelette rice. So uh, the students had to follow a recipe and then create the recipe and eat it and take a picture of it, you know, send that to me. And then I would say, hey, you understood the recipe, obviously, so that was good. Some kind of creative writing. Creative writing is always fun. Give them something goofy to write about. Um, following directions to build something or draw something. I'll show you that on the next slide, all that kind of stuff I did. And an oral exam, like my roll call, which I'll talk about in the, in the next uh, video. Ideas for projects you could do with your students. Well, I gave my students, I sent them home. Uh, the buses were delivering uh, materials for us and I sent them home some Japanese grid paper and I told them to make themselves uh, some crossword puzzles and um, take a picture of them and then I would send the crossword puzzles to other students. Now, I didn't want them using um, an online crossword puzzle generator because, of course, there's no thought involved in that. You just type in the words. I wanted them to think about it, so they had to actually draw it out. So here's an example of that. Um, this student did a word search, and that was fun. Then they could they could give each other uh, their stuff, and they could say, hey, I did that. Um, I had a lot of art projects. I've got a lot of great books in other languages. So I gave my students, hey, here's this art project. You have to read the instructions to know what to do. You know, here's uh, and I said, oh, you might not have all the supplies, but you do your best and I'll be able to tell if you understood the directions or not. You know, this was one where they had to take some aluminum foil and paint it with uh, markers. And that was really nice. And then um, they got really creative. They got so creative with it. This student, it was funny. He accidentally broke his. So he made this little story to go with it that this fish had swum too close to the surface. He's got the scissors in this picture. It was absolutely beautiful. They were so creative. Um, I really like this project-based learning. It was it was a good focus. Uh, having taken all these CTE classes, it was really nice to see them, the students using their 21st century skills and knowing that they could really apply the language. That was very exciting to see. Don't go crazy with assignments. Um, online learning is more difficult than in class. You don't have their attention for that long. Uh, you wanna make sure that they're really focusing. You don't want them to feel overwhelmed. They have other online classes, and if they feel overwhelmed, I can guarantee you dollars to donuts. It's the language classes that are gonna suffer. 
they'll put their effort into math, they'll put their effort into English, and they will ignore world language classes because of the idea that it's not going to serve them as well. So don't go crazy with assignments. Make sure what you're assigning has meaning and purpose and is relevant to the students. The last part of brain science I want to talk about, I'm at my 10 minute mark. I'm going to go to 11 minutes. Um, the last part that's really hugely important, had the effect size of like 0.75, I think, is that instant feedback or as close as humanly possible as you can get to it. So the reason I chose the four pillars that I chose is because each of them will give the students that instant feedback. Duolingo will not let them progress until they get every sentence right. Quizlet tells them you didn't get this right. Peak Save will say, hey, keep trying. You didn't get this right. This is what it should be. And of course, a song hopefully they're listening to over and over and over again. Um, if, if we can give the students the tools to be self-correcting, that's even better. But I find this a real challenge in an online environment where the students have never heard the language before. So these, this is the reason I chose these as my pillars is because they would give that student, the, they would give the students that instant feedback that is so crucial to growth. So in our next episode, we're going to talk about games. I'm all about games. And I think the students are far more engaged with games than they are with uh, boring worksheets to fill out. So next, next episode, ideas for games. See you then.